Um, and now I would like to invite Julie Lesnick to the podium to tell us about why eating flies and other very tiny animals was probably important to no longer living human-like animals. <laughs> About 100 times 100 times 100 times two years ago, <laughs> there were human-like animals that are no longer living. These human-like animals ate a lot of different foods. When, we, when people think about these human-like animals and what they ate, they most often think about large animals. But they probably enjoyed eating very tiny animals like flies as well. Today, when people and animals that today are the most human-like, but they are less human-like than the no longer living like animals. <laughs> when they eat very tiny animals, it is the moms and babies that eat them the most. This is probably also true for the old, no longer living human-like animals, because these very tiny animals are easy to get and are made up of the right kinds of parts that make food easy to use in the body, for different things like building the parts of the body, for controlling the inside parts of the body, and giving animals the power to live, work, and play. People, human-like animals, and human-like animals from long ago, do not need to spend a lot of time looking for these very tiny animals. Many of these very tiny animals live in large groups with a lot of their brothers and sisters. <laughs> so when a human-like animal finds their home, they can catch a lot of these very tiny animals at one time. The human-like animals of long ago would have used sticks from the inside of large animals <laughs> to, <laughs> to break into the homes of these very tiny animals. Today we have some of these sticks that are 100 times 100 times 100 times 2 years old. I made sure these sticks were used to break into the homes of very tiny animals by making my own sticks from the sticks from inside of these large animals and breaking into the homes of very tiny animals that live today. I looked at the marks on the ends of the very old sticks and the marks on the ends of my sticks and could see that they were the same. But not all of these types of tiny animals are the same. Some have noses. <laughs> Some have noses that give off stuff that can burn your mouth. None of the humans or human-like animals that live today eat these very tiny animals. Some have mouths that can cut you. But if you eat fast, this can be avoided. <laughs> Using small sticks is the best way because the very tiny animals bite the stick instead of you. However, not all of the very tiny animals that are brothers and sisters in the same home are the same to eat. Some have more parts that help build our bodies and others have more parts that help power our bodies. Today's human-like animals like the ones that build bodies best. People like to eat the ones that give us power. The no, long no longer living human-like animals of the past probably ate both types. But these kinds of very tiny animals are not the only ones that can be eaten. There are over 100 times 20 different kinds of very tiny animals that are eaten today. Some of them do not live in large groups with their brothers and sisters, so they can be harder to find. But there are times of the year, times of the year when these very tiny animals all have babies at the same time. These babies hang and climb in trees while the parents fly away. Many people say that these baby tiny animals are their favorite to eat. No longer living human-like animals probably ate these too when they were around. If you want to try to eat some very tiny animals, I have some. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the ones that can bite you, but I have babies of ones that people like to eat. You probably know them because people also like to give them to animals that they keep in their homes. <laughs> the ones I have are dry and give your mouth the feeling of sweet fire. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Although, if you can't eat this city's favorite food, then you might want to avoid eating these very tiny animals. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. That was very important.